start this song. Don't go to school, you're a jerk. Don't go to school, you're a jerk. Don't go to school, don't go to school. Don't go to school, you're a jerk. Don't go to school, you're a jerk. Don't go to school, you're a jerk. Don't go to school, don't go to school, don't go to school, you're a jerk. I'm a jerk cause I like to go to school. I'm a jerk cause I want to go to school. Why I understand this tool. I don't know what is a school. I just like to go to school. Make it look like every cool kind of person in the world. No one wants to take this girl. I pray to you. Everything I do is an extension of you. I do not want to be you. I do not want to be you. But I look to you. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got it. No, the reason why I called you is because I have not been getting any offers lately, and <clears throat> like I met you the other day, and we talked, and I was just kind of like, what the fuck? Dude, that's not the point. Okay, yeah, but by contract is one thing, fucking me around and robbing me is another. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, alright, well, go fuck yourself. It's six years since I recorded. At least, not entirely on my own. What they don't tell you in the music industry is you have to basically appeal to an entire wide group of people. So what does that do? It takes away from yourself. In 2014, I decided to leave South Florida, where I had gone to high school to become a filmmaker. But <laughs> during the time in high school, I uh, got into things like drugs and partying and I'd always loved music. I think that music was what made me want to live way more than anything I could ever even study or imagine. So I left. And um, in 2014 also I met Derek Drop Braxton, the famed producer and beat maker. And that's where we recorded my first album, who was Mr. Pope. Right before I left, I made a promise to myself. I was going to sacrifice my quality of life just to do what I loved. At the same time that I wanted to be a musician, I know I just wanted to be something larger than life. I was very much inspired by psychedelic music, but I, uh, I knew that it was 2010 and um, the best they could call me was lo-fi. I don't know if I ever had a genre or a ambition or a goal, I just could only identify with being an outsider. That's me in the studio, trying to do a headshot. They wanted to do some promotional stuff and I just wanted to make it as difficult as possible for them. I guess I've always had a bad habit of just fucking goofing off. I mean, no matter what, I always felt like uncomfortable, but had to be as outgoing as possible just to make things less difficult for the world around me. Being from West Palm Beach and then moving to the city was a weird time for me. I mean, they didn't really like me from Florida. They thought I was some kind of hillbilly. But I had gone to art school, so I was used to being around freaks. When I was 13 years old, I got sent away to a therapeutic boarding school, and... God, that shit was crazy. My family really didn't know what to think of what I was doing. They thought that I was just like, you know, crazy. I was always the, the mascot, the outgoing one. I ended up moving to New Brunswick, New Jersey, where I became Mr. Pope at the same time. I had a good run in the open mic scene, but unfortunately I was cast aside as coffee shop music and didn't get the best gigs. Also, I was a hillbilly from Florida. By the time I came back to South Florida, I basically was a legend to people who had never met me before, only through crazy stories in my high school partying years. I was known as the guy who liked to play in the streets, do things his own way in an unorthodox fashion. Recording music on my cell phone, that kind of became my bit. Now here I am, and I've released maybe, I don't know, several 
solo albums all on my own independently. When I met Derek Drop Braxton, he had just gotten out of the studio with, I believe, Pharrell. Um, he had just come from Chicago and he was <clears throat> basically where I am right now. I'd moved back home to figure things out. And he promised me, well, he didn't promise me anything. In fact, the only thing he promised was, I can't promise anything. So that's what the music industry really is like. It's like anything else. There's no glamour, there's no, it's just, it's work. I think the musician I related the most to was Tom Waits. There was something about the combination of different mediums and just all about storytelling. There was this roughness and this honesty about his music and his voice and his life that I had already identified with not even living that life. But unfortunate for me, Tom Waits has been done before. Maybe for some of the people who remember me in New Brunswick and my early days, this was what I was going for. <laughs> The beatnik thing always appealed to me because, uh, you know, I had pretty much dabbled in a lot of subcultures and things I had known and seen before, but what are we to do in the year of our Lord? The year that we know is right here and right now. Trying to be somebody else, trying to live in someone else's shoes, that's, that's the biggest waste of your life you can imagine. That was pretty much the purpose of my first real album, entirely produced by myself. I'm a savant. I really did feel so fucked over by Derek, who had promised me that he was going to record my stuff, 4LP deal here, this and that. I fed the guy, I did everything I could, and... I just ended up becoming another stepping stone, something he could capitalize on to revamp his career. I wanted to be the definition of millennial cool. But that's just the main problem with the millennial is that we all are cool. So creating this pseudo beatnik kind of thing in the 2010s was what I wanted to make my entire life's journey about. I purposely made my music mix at a high level, almost unlistenable like the most ear-killing pop you could, bedroom pop, whatever you could think of. The only band that I really liked at the time that I was growing up was the Black Lips, because they kind of understood the things about music that I tried to understand. I always recorded as a solo artist, but the main thing I wanted to do was have a band. People's Love Cult was about <clears throat> fun, being yourself, not worrying about branding or marketing, just the first band that's also a religion. Now the problem was was that people in South Florida are dumb and there is no culture so they really assumed that I was trying to start some kind of uh, war against the church or the local religion or something like that so it was tough when I come back from uh, New Jersey and to say the least I uh, knew that being in a band now because everything has been done whatever but that that's kind of just like a saying um, it hasn't all been done it's not what you take it's where you take it that's just my personal opinion <laughs> because I've managed to record 13 albums with a band it doesn't matter if you're the coolest or the hippest or you're playing at this club, never be impressed by somebody. Ever. Especially if you do the shit I do. The last freedom we have with music is the fact that music, well, shouldn't be defined by a scene, by a sound. It should just be itself, stand alone. And that was why I started this band.
not just built around me, but built around the idea that the healing component of music is within itself. Keeping a band is uh, a full-time job. It has to be a job to the people you're working with. But not everything works out as planned. I mean, people are really fucking stupid to think I would actually want to start a cult. I'm satisfied with what we've done so far. I'm satisfied with how it went. We started recording in 2015. It was the uh, album Sun God, but it was originally called Goat. Before that, we did one EP. That was really an anti-music statement. It was something that I was so excited about because it was my... You know, my first thing, kind of like the vein of the Fugs, Velvet Underground. I don't even like to name other bands anymore because people get all upset. When Emperor Donald Trump was elected, we recorded live at Mar-a-Lago. To my knowledge, that was the earliest, the first anti-Trump record. And uh, you can put that in your history book, but because we have a reputation with the local scene, and by we, me, my band, you would never even know about the first band that's also a religion, the People's Love Cult. We played one show in 2015 at a festival, Face the Music, and uh, I made a joke about the devil and come one, come all type thing. Some people showed up and asked, is that what you guys really believe in? The club owner got all upset, but he was like, yeah, he told the people that were showing up that, and they left, and uh, it turns out that those people all worked for the church. One of those Christ Fellowship things. If there's one thing I could do, I could stop the oppression in this modern day, just purely through the art alone. That's why it doesn't matter who's in the band or what it sounds like, it's just... That's the message. We are you. We've gone through a lot of lineup changes because... I mean, I'm pretty crazy, I'm pretty difficult to work with. I guess in a way you could call me... His unholy mess. The mad cult leader. Mr. Pope. silly now, especially when it's a lot of young kids who refuse to understand the concept of branding or just understand the productivity of whatever, but now everything I hear is you have to have a following, you have to have a following. Well, duh. It was always like that. There was just simply less music back then. <clears throat> less of us had the technology. It was always about luck. There is no talent, there is no next big thing, there is no star. We are, we're all stars. And yes, it's a genre of music that I created, cult rock, because it's the people's love cult, and the stage name Mr. Pope was meant to go as Mr. Pope of the band, the people's love cult. That was it. And we have a small but loyal following. You know, like Fox News. Pride yourself on that. Weirdest thing is, we have a cold following and it's a cold rock band, so I'm happy. I fucking love what I do. Got me. You can fucking do it. Because we have the technology. Look at this right here. 
exit this site right now.